Before we get started with the pen tool tutorial, I'm going to show you my Photoshop workspace setup. Um, just what palettes and windows I have open and where they're located. In the background, you, um, I have my desktop set to a picture of Anna from V um, that I drew like a couple weeks ago. So I'm like totally crushing on her. But anyway, so this is the layout of the windows that I have open. Um, you can change your windows by going to Window workspace and they have a bunch of defaults. This is CS4 but CS3, all the other versions of Photoshop have um, different setups that you can use. Whatever you like best, I would play around with them and just see what um, windows you use the most. So we're going to open a new document and file new. Um, I'm just going to do just a little 600 by 600 RGB um, document just to show you guys a couple of the things that I do with the pen tool. There are so many things that you can do with it and use it for that I can't show them all but we're going to start with shapes and strokes. First off, when you click and hold down the pen tool, you're going to get some options. Most are self-explanatory except for the convert point tool, which converts a hard point to a curved point and vice versa. So we've got the pen tool selected and you'll notice in your options window up top, you can either do it as a shape layer or as a path. First I'll show you the shape layer. I don't use it very much, but when you create it, it creates a new layer that's a vector and that color box to the left, you can change the colors. Um, anything that you pick will be reflected in your shape. And that's just how um, you know that works. It's uh, you can adjust the shape at any time because it is a vector. It's like a smart layer or um, you know one of your vector masks. So if you use the direct selection tool, which is the little white arrow, you can pull out um, the anchor points. You can select two at once and move them at the same time. You can um, use the direct uh, the path selection tool and select the whole path and move it around. Um, it's not stuck to anything because it's a shape layer um, and you'll see at the top that it's called like it's they automatically call it like shape one or whatever and so that's how the shape works i normally use the path layer you have to create a new layer before you stroke it so i moved over the layers palette and just do, created a new layer and you can stroke fill um make it a selection you know create make it a vector mask i just filled it with the foreground color and now I'm going to stroke it with a 13 pixel brush. You have to set whatever tool you're going to stroke it with. You have to change the settings to be what you want. So I'm going to stroke the path with the brush tool and I have already set it to 13 pixel. And that's what it looks like. It's a uniform stroke. You can also simulate brush or simulate pressure and that's going to taper it at the, the start and the end. This comes in handy, in handy when you're doing line work. If you want like a varied line width, it keeps things looking a lot more fluid and interesting because you have that nice tapered stroke. And we're going to go into how to use that a little more um, later on. So this is the free form pen tool. Um, you just, instead of making points, you just draw. It'll smooth it out for you. And then you can stroke it, fill it, do whatever with it. There's also, um, I'm playing around signing my name. Um, there's also the magnetic pen tool option uh, with the free form pen tool. And that is a lot like the magnetic lasso tool where it will cleave to um, the edge of shapes. Now you have some options with your pen tool. You can combine your paths where any two paths you draw over each other when you fill them, they combine to one. You can um, do the exclusion where it only fills the outside. You can do the overlap part where it just fills where your two paths overlap. But if you try to switch it after the fact, it'll go with whatever setting you had when it was drawn. And the fourth option will just exclude where the two paths overlap. Now we're going to touch on the true power of the pen tool, the Bezier curve. Now whenever you are just using the pen tool and you're just clicking points, you are going to create hard corner anchor points. Those are good in some um, geometric applications, but most of the time you're going to need a curved line. If you click and drag, it's, you're going to extend control lines and control handles from your anchor point, and those lines are going to, and handles are going to influence the, the curve. That, that results the the level of your arc. Um, if you click and drag while holding the shift key, it's going to constrain the movement of your control lines and control handles to horizontal, vertical, or 45 degrees. If you click and hold the shift and alt key, you're only going to, you're gonna break apart those control lines and only affect one side of the, the control line and it's going to be restricted horizontally, vertically, um, in 45 degrees. If you just click and hold the Alt key, you'll just be affecting one side of the control line and you can have free range of movement. Now, as you can see, the, the control line and the control handle that comes before your point and on the point that you're creating will affect the curve 
um, you just think of those the little handle that I just grabbed right there as a magnet and it just pulls the shape of the curve it just the more you play with it the more comfortable you get with it there I was moving it holding the alt key if you um, hold down the command key your pen tool is going to switch to a direct selection tool and as you're going you can actually tweak the curves that you're working with or you can go back with the direct selection tool and adjust the curves that you've already created just by clicking on those anchor points and when you click on the anchor point it's going to show all the handles for that particular point and you can grab one side or the other since these two um, handles that I'm working with right now have already been broken apart when I just grab them and move them with the direct selection tool they move independent of one another now when I grab this anchor point the control handles have not been I did not use the alt key to um, manipulate the control handle separately so when I move the right side it affects the its counterpart on the left hand side now I can still hold down the alt key and now I can break it apart and move it independently of its counterpart. The more you play around with it, the more it'll be like second nature and it gets easier, trust me. Now I'm going to show you how I use this stuff for digital inking. I pulled out some old sketch that I drew in college and I'm just dragging out those points. I'm not really altering any handles, but just dragging them out and I'm just going to do a flat out stroke without simulating pressure. It's kind of boring, right? But then if you do simulate pressure, you um, lose the ends of your stroke. So something that I like to do is combine the two. You stroke the path um, by, while simulating pressure, then switch your brush to a brush about two pixels smaller and stroke the path without simulated pressure. So in the end, you get the varied line weight, but you also get a finished line. So that's something that I like to do if you're gonna do it that way. You can also, instead of stroking, fill your pen path um, for your varied line width. It takes longer, but you get the most control over the width of your line and where you want the weight of your line to be. So, and then you just fill the path in whatever your, you know, color you want to be and then you have your line. Let's move over to Adobe Illustrator. A lot of the things about the pen tool are the same, but if you um, want to keep your lines as vectors, it's a lot easier. If you want some really smooth inking, I highly recommend using Illustrator if you've got it because you can always, you just have a lot more freedom with tweaking your lines in smaller files. So we're going to grab that pen tool and do the same thing that we did in Photoshop. If you click down once, you get a point. If you drag, you get a curve. If you hit alt, you get to edit, you know, the, the handle of the curve. If you hit shift alt, it's a straight, um, it's, it's a restricted uh, movement and, and so forth and so on. So I'm just going to make a, a really funky shape to just show you the difference in Illustrator. Now, once you've got your you know, your shape all stroked out. You can, um, right now it's got a white fill and a black stroke. You can make it a black fill, a white stroke, any colors you want to use. You can go back and change those and you have a, a ton of flexibility um, in Illustrator. You can stroke it with an art brush so you can, you know, get like a charcoal -y line or you know, the, op you know, the options are limitless. You can create your own brush to stroke it with, whatever. So right now I'm going to show you um, the brush and pencil tool, which are awesome for if you've got maybe an Intuos or if you're really good with your, your bamboo or any kind of, you know, Cintiq or other Wacom, you just draw it out and you get the benefit, you get the smoothness of the brush tool, but the benefit of the pen tool because they still, they still have points. So it's like using the freeform pen tool in Photoshop, which is really cool. And um, it also smooths things out for you. You can adjust the level of smoothing by double clicking on the brush tool and you'll get the paintbrush tool options that'll pop up and you know you can keep it selected which will show the points when you draw it out I'll show you that right now so you see all the blue anchor points that's what happens when you keep it selected and you just use your direct selection tool to play with your handles and anchors I just up this to 100% which you probably don't want to do but you see how how much of a difference it makes in the smoothness of your line like it will really correct things for you um, and it's super easy if you can freehand it. Now we're going to talk about the Pathfinder tool or the Pathfinder window, which is really awesome to use when you're combining shapes. So if you select your shape, um, that combines, you know, the two the two paths that you did. That one subtracts from the path. That one goes for just what's overlapping, and then this one will clear out the overlap so that when you fill it, that empties the space. So I mean, quick and dirty. How to use the pen tool in Photoshop? and Illustrator. Good luck. If you have any questions, you know, shoot me a message. Don't forget to visit me at www.chrismickens.com and thank you so much.